Just open Blender and feeling overwhelmed by all the buttons and options? Don't worry. In this video, we're going to break down Blender's interface, tools, and key features step by step. By the end, you'll have a solid understanding of the basics to kickstart your 3D journey. Let's dive right in. Step 1. Getting familiar with the interface. Top bar tabs. At the very top of the Blender interface, you'll find tabs like layout, modeling, sculpting, UV editing, and more. These tabs organize the workflow into specific stages. Here's a breakdown. Layout. This is your starting point and the most frequently used workspace. It allows you to move, scale, rotate, and position objects in your scene. Modeling. Enter this workspace for detailed mesh editing and shaping of objects. Tools like extrude, bevel, and loop cut are central here. Sculpting. Ideal for organic shapes and characters. Instead of manipulating geometry with tools, you'll use brushes to sculpt forms like clay. UV editing. This is where you'll prepare your 3D models for texturing by unwrapping them into 2D space. It's crucial for applying textures accurately. Shading. Build and adjust materials and textures for your objects here. This is where things start looking realistic. Animation and rendering. For animating your models and producing your final outputs, including still images or videos. Each tab is tailored for specific tasks, making your workflow more organized and efficient. Properties panel. The properties panel on the right-hand side is the hub for most of the settings you'll adjust. Let's go through the key sections and what they're used for. Render settings, camera icon. This is where you select your render engine, like EV or Cycles. Adjust resolution, sampling, and quality settings for your final renders. Output settings, printer icon. Defines where your renders will be saved and in what format, e.g. PNG for images or MP4 for videos. View layer settings. Manage different layers in your scene. This is useful for compositing elements separately, such as shadows, reflections, or objects. Scene settings. Adjust global properties like units of measurement, metric slash imperial, gravity settings, and color management. World settings. This is where you define the environment of your scene. You can add HDRI maps from sources like Polyhaven for realistic lighting and reflections. Collection settings. Organize objects into groups or layers collections. This makes managing complex scenes much easier. For instance, you could create separate collections for furniture, lights, and cameras. Object properties. These control transformations like position, rotation, and scale. You can also view parenting relationships and constraints here. Modifiers wrench icon. Modifiers allow you to make non-destructive changes to objects. Popular modifiers include subdivision surface for smoothness and array for duplicates. Particle settings. Use particles for simulations like creating hair, grass, smoke, or rain. This section is particularly useful for advanced animations and effects. Physics settings. Add dynamics like collisions, cloth, or fluid simulations. For example, you can simulate water flowing or cloth draping over an object. Constraints. Bind one object's movement or transformation to another, which is very helpful in animations, e.g., making a camera follow an object. Object data properties. This section allows you to tweak specifics like vertex groups, UV maps, or curve settings, depending on the object type. Texture settings. Add and adjust textures to give surfaces details like wood grains, stone patterns, or fabric weaves. Toolbar. The toolbar on the left offers quick access to frequently used tools. Move G for repositioning objects in your scene. Rotate. R allows you to spin objects around their axes. Scale. S resize objects proportionally. Transform. Combines move, rotate, and scale in one tool. These tools are also available through shortcuts, which you'll quickly get used to using. Step 2. Essential tools in object mode. In object mode, you interact with entire objects. Here are the most important functions. Shift plus A, add menu, use this to add new objects like meshes, lights, or cameras. Right-click menu, provides quick actions like duplicating, shading, or deleting objects. Parenting, control plus peen attach one object to another, so the parent controls its movement or rotation. Step three, essential tools in edit mode. Switch to edit mode with tab to edit the geometry of your objects. This is where modeling happens. Selection modes. Switch between selecting vertices, edges, or faces. These are the building blocks of your model. 
extrude, Eve extend faces outward to create new geometry. Perfect for things like walls or arms on a character. Inset, I create smaller faces inside an existing face, useful for windows or panels. Loop cut, control plus R, insert additional loops to divide your geometry and add more control. Knife tool, Cave allows custom cutting of your geometry to create unique shapes. Proportional editing. OBE smoothly edit multiple points at once for organic shapes. Step 4 View Modes. In the top right corner, Blender offers several view modes. Wireframe. See the skeletal structure of your models for precise editing. Solid. The default mode for basic modeling. Material Preview. Preview materials and textures on your models in real time. Rendered. See your scene with final lighting, materials, and effects applied. Step 5. Saving and Rendering 1. Save your work. Go to File Save As, then choose a location and name your project. 2. Render your scene. Press 0 on the numpad to enter camera view. Go to Render Render Image to create a final render of your scene. Blender is a powerful tool, and while the interface may seem intimidating at first, it gets easier with practice. Start with these basics and you'll be ready to create your first 3D masterpiece in no time. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to learn next. And as always, happy blending!